everyone, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today I'm going to be propagating my salvias. This is a really good idea for a number of reasons. Salvias aren't necessarily very hardy. If you've got woody stemmed salvias, they're a little bit more hardy, I think. But something like Salvia Amistad is not, generally speaking, hardy in my area. And I live in South Buckinghamshire in the UK, so we don't necessarily get very harsh winters. And although my Salvia Amistad managed to overwinter last year, one of them looked a little bit ropey at the beginning of the year. So this year I'm going to propagate them for two reasons. Uh, first, I'm going to pro propagate them so that I definitely have the salvia amistad behind me again next year but also because I want some more of them and this is a really great way to make free plants and I'd like some in the back garden this is the front garden here behind me so I'd like some more in the back garden because they're stunning plants I mean they're tall and they're really vibrant and it's the middle of October and they're still flowering so I think that's fantastic I love the contrast between the light green leaves and the purple flowers so anyway I'd like some more of them and I'd like to protect these ones um, so that I have standbys in case I need to replace them and so today I'm going to show you how to propagate them. So it's very easy you need some snips and a plastic bag and then you need some potting compost and what we're going to do is we're going to take non-flowering stems so you don't want stems that are flowered because they will have expended their energy and also you want that growing tip um, so it's quite hard to find them at this time of year but if you root around you'll find some you know fairly short um, non-flowering stems I mean pretty much every stem behind me has flowered but I will find some and then you can either just sort of bend it backwards and gently tease it off the stem and take your cutting and then just put it in your plastic bag or you can take your snips and just cut it where you want to and then put that in your plastic bag and then as quickly as possible you want to just go and pot them on in the summer or early spring you know when I'm propagating things at that time of year I tend to wander around with like a jug of water and just plonk them in there because I find that a bit easier but I want to make sure that these cuttings retain their moisture so today I'm going to use a plastic bag so what I'm going to do is take a non-flowering shoot, so that's non-flowering, and I'm just going to trace it back to the stem and then peel it off there. And that's my cutting. So with the salvias, they don't need any, you know, particularly fantastic protection. You don't need a heated greenhouse or anything like that. In fact, you could leave them outside in a very protected corner if you want to, um, but just make sure that they have light. You could start your cuttings off um, inside and just make sure that they're in a humid environment. So you need to cover them with something just so that the foliage that's left retains some moisture. So you could put them in your kitchen or somewhere warm until they've rooted. And then after that, put them outside in a protected environment. And when I say protected, the reason, one of the reasons we're taking cuttings is because we're not sure that they're going to overwinter. If we get a really cold winter and it snows a lot, then there is a danger that these plants won't make it through. So you want to treat your cuttings in the same way, even once they're rooted you want to make sure they're slightly protected but it's a lot easier with cuttings because you can just move the pot you know into a sheltered space the other salvia i'm taking cuttings from today is called salvia gregii icing sugar and it is another salvia that is still in full bloom in october mid-october so along with my dahlias actually this is a really bright spark here in my back garden i love it in this corridor bed here these are woody stemmed salvias and what i do every year every spring is i cut them right back to you know the hard wood I suppose and I cut them right down and then they shoot up and they're really huge by this time of year they're really huge and it's sort of this big ball of bright pink and because I love them so much I again want these in other places in my garden now I think these are a lot more hardy because as I said I cut them back I never give them any particular protection they come back every single year so I think these are a lot more hardy than the Amistad um, don't take my word for that though I suppose you should probably check or maybe I could check for you um, but I want lots more of these because they bloom for such a long period and it's such a lovely bright colour. So I do have a lot of pastels in my garden and I love those sorts of things. And I also, you know, if you know me, you'll know that I love the really big blousey blooms and things like that. And these are really very petite flowers, but there's such a little sort of sprinkling of bright colour in the flower bed. And I, I love them because of that. So I want more of them. Uh, anyway, I'm going to now take my cuttings and show you 
how I'm potting them up and what I do with them and then if you've got any salvias that you would like to protect over the winter or propagate so that you have loads more of them then you can do exactly the same thing. So I have had my cuttings sitting in a jug of water covered in this plastic bag for about half an hour while I had lunch and then I tried to film this outside and it started raining on me so I've had to run inside so it's lucky that I put them in water um, because they've been in here a little bit longer than you know it's ideal but it's fine they, they'll be hydrated and I have mixed my cuttings up but that's because one cutting is very different to the other so this is a salvia amistad oh it smells amazing this is the salvia amistad here with the larger leaves and this is the icing sugar here with the smaller ones. So I did put them all in the same one but it's only because they are very different to each other. I don't use any rooting compound for my salvia cuttings at all. I think they'll root really quickly. They should root in about three weeks time. Um, they're, a salvia is essentially like mint. You'll realise when you're cutting it that it smells kind of minty and I think it's a really nice minty aroma. So um, they should root really quickly. It probably means, and I've never tried this, but it probably means that if you put them in a glass of water, change the water every day, but they might root in that too. But that's not what I'm doing today. Today I'm going to put them in compost. Um, I'm using the compost that I always use, which is the Melcourt Silver Grow Petri Compost. I highly recommend it. I, this is not an ad, but I just really like it. And I'll link that below as well if you would like to have a look at that. Um, I know it's more expensive than other compost, but it is important if at all possible, if you can financially afford it, to try to get peat-free compost. And I know some of them can be really dodgy. I've tried quite a few, but this one I really like. And then the other thing that I'm going to use is um, a little propagator. So this is just, um, I use these trays. You've probably seen them before if you've watched my channels, and a lid. And I'm going to keep, like this. And I'm going to keep my cuttings hydrated and the atmosphere around it humid, which is what they need, um, by putting them in that little sort of propagator. But if you don't have one of those, you could equally just um, put a plastic bag, tie a plastic bag over your pot, try and use like some sticks to hold it up so that the leaves aren't touching the plastic bag because they could rot. Um, but you could cover your um, cuttings with a plastic bag, just a, an ordinary, you know, see-through plastic bag. Um, and that works just as well, and many people do it that way. I mean, you could just fashion a propagator out of anything, so long as it's tall enough, and try to make sure it's not touching the leaves. But I happen to have those, so that's what I'm going to be using today. Now, you can use any pot to um, put your cuttings in. Um, I think probably don't use anything that's too shallow, because you're going to try to get at least two leaf nodes in inside the compost, and then you want roots to grow around that. So you don't want to use like really shallow things. I, you know, a small yogurt pot's not really going to work. What I'm using today are these nine centimeter pots. Um, and I'm going to put two or three cuttings into each one. And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. I normally use much bigger pots, well, much bigger, like a litre pot. But I'm using these nine centimeter pots because um, I do want to give some away as gifts. Um, but also I find that these pots fit really well inside my propagator with the leafy foliage on top. I don't want anything that's too big and too tall in there. So that's why I'm using these and they are, because they're nine centimetres, they're deep enough to get two leaf nodes in and then let the roots grow below that too. But you can use anything. You can, as long as you've poked holes in it, you could use like a milk carton or an old yogurt pot or a soup container or something like that. You could literally use anything. So you'll see that I've filled my pots up with compost and um, the compost has been mixed with a little bit of grit and then the other thing that I've got here is a chopping board because you do need like it can be anything but I've got an old chopping board here you need a hard surface to cut your cuttings if you're anything like me you'll think you're going to remember what the cuttings are but you won't because I don't well you might but I don't so I always label all my cuttings and I strongly advise you to label each of your pots so I've potted up all my salvias, but I have a horrible feeling that it didn't record what I was doing. So what I'm going to do, even though I've finished, is I'm just going to show you how I prepared the salvias, um, just in case that hasn't worked. So if it's like an odd piece of filming, it's because I've already potted them all up, but I do have a few spares. And I'll just show you how I prepare it, and then how I stick it in the pot, um, just so that you can see what I did. So all I do to prepare my cuttings is I take the bottom leaves off and you want to leave 
two leaf nodes. So a leaf node is where the leaves were attached. So this is a leaf node here, and then that's another leaf node there. I mean, if you don't have two leaf nodes, that's fine, but ideally you want to leave two leaf nodes and then you cut just below that second leaf node. And then, in fact, I might take these off too. And then you make a hole with your dibber and just plunge your cutting in so that both those leaf nodes are covered like that. I'll do another one. So here's another lovely cutting. So I'm just going to take all the top leaves off like that. And actually this is a branching stem. So I'm just going to cut that because I don't particularly want the branching stem. So then you just need to check where your leaf nodes are. So I've got, well, there was one leaf node there and another one there, but that's where I'm going to take it down to because and what you don't want to do is you want to avoid um, your leaves touching the compost. So when you plunge it in, let me put it here, you don't want any leaves touching the compost because that would just make your cutting rot. So I'm making sure that two, if not three, leaf nodes are below the soil surface like that. And that's what I did to all of these. You'll see here where I've cut some of the leaves off and that's because if I felt there was too much foliage, I the, the leaves transpire and so they lose moisture and they'll dry out faster. So if I felt there was too much on a particular cutting, I cut some of the leaves, but you'll see, you know, others, I left them. So we'll see how that does. And what you want to try and do is make sure that none of your leaves are touching other ones because, you know, it'll be a moist environment and you want to avoid that. Now that everything's potted up, what I'm going to do is water them all in and that will make sure there aren't any air pockets around the stems because you want to make sure that the soil, the compost is touching all of your cuttings um, so that they can root. So you don't want any air pockets. So I'm going to water them in thoroughly and then I'm going to put them in my little tray with the propagator lid on top. So once you've potted up your cuttings and protected them, you can leave them outdoors if you want to, but if you want them to root a bit faster, you can use bottom heat, which is like a heat mat. You can put them on a heat mat. Um, you don't want them to get too hot because then the compost will dry out. So you do need to keep an eye on the moisture levels in your compost if you put them on a heat mat, but you could just leave them in a warm kitchen or somewhere like that where there's lots of light and just keep an eye on them every day. Um, if you want to leave them outside, that's absolutely fine. They should root outside, especially if you have a cold frame or a greenhouse, an unheated greenhouse, that will be fine. Um, but just always remember to check the moisture levels. You don't want your compost to get dry. You also don't want it to be absolutely sodden because then your cutting will rot. So it is, you know, a fine line, but it's not too difficult. So we'll definitely be updating everyone on how my cuttings are doing in about a month's time. So if you want to see that, then do subscribe to my channel because then you'll get notified uh, when I post that video. Um, but that's it for today. I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. I think that's about it. Do I have to say anything else? The other salvia that I'm taking cuttings from today is called salvia... Damn, icy sugar. <laughs> Idiot. And both, I have two bushes. Um, these are um, hard, uh, what are they called? Woody stemmed. So the salvias that I'm propagating today are salvia amistad and a salvia called salvia gregii icing sugar. It's literally just started to rain. I thought it was a bit dark. Maybe it stopped. I may have to dash inside. I'm going in. <laughs>